Hello, and welcome back to part three of my best value turbo M52 build using my favorite combination of aftermarket and OEM parts. Today, we are gonna go ahead and throw his Athena cut ring head gasket on. Then we will drop the head on and torque it down. Once that's done, we will put in his custom cams and time them and then throw in his Vanos. Now, if y'all hang out and watch the whole thing, which the algorithm really loves. Then at the end, I will show you guys how we can rebuild a Vanos for free, for free, with no parts at all and fix the rattle. If you're pinching pennies, this is a good way to do it. All right, guys, you're gonna enjoy this one. Let's jump in. All right, let's do these dowels. We have a brass brace so that it doesn't damage it. We'll use a smooth side of it. Mm, a little crooked. Look a little crooked over here. There it is. Go. Here we go. All the hardware is lubricated and hand tight. The washers are clean and dry on the bottom. Threads are lubricated, nuts are lubricated. We are good to go here with the torque sequence. Now, I never remember it, so it's always on the board, but let's get started. Here's the sequence, of course. And then if you see there, there is what they recommend for foot pounds and here is what we're doing 30 55 85 it's here you got your numbers there to start. 30 goes quick let's move on to the 55 foot pounds and then the freaking 85 which sucks you'll see me here with my feet jam between it holding on as best as I can when there's not cars here I can lower a lift arm down onto the jack and that helps a ton. 55, knocked out. Let's go ahead and set the camera up. Brace this stand as best we can and start knocking out the 85 foot pounds. Pray we don't break a stud. Can't believe we even said that. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. It's Stand somehow. Gosh, this is so much easier with your help. Last one. Ready? 
These are all torqued to 85 foot pounds. Sweet, let's drop the cams in. We've got our cam trays here ready to go in. You see there's an A on that one and an E on that one. Don't mix it up, it'll break everything. Now let's lean it the other way. A, exhaust, they are facing forward. Let's drop these cams in. I love the green stuff, man. M50 non Vanos intake cam. We're going to put this intake cam on the exhaust side. And then we have our M54B30 intake cam, the intake side. Okay, now we have to set, uh, we'll get it out of TDC and put it about 50 or 60 degrees before it. Then all the valves, We'll clear the pistons. So let's do our checker, drop it in. Okay, cool. Let's get our gauge. 60 degrees, 50 degrees, so about right there. Then we know that none of the valves are gonna hit the pistons when we squish these cans down in and press, assumedly press whichever lobes are touching their rockers and press everything down. Now I can show you guys, TDC's there. We are right here between 10 and 11 o'clock from TDC. Drops all the pistons low enough that the valves won't hit them as we turn these cams over to tighten them and work them into place. So this cam's got some pretty decent scores. You can see right here when you look in underneath the lube I just applied, but with these cams and these uh, cam journals, it does not matter if there's mild scoring like that at all. Uh, and my buddy even polished this one up on his lathe a little bit just to clean it a little, but you can see they're still violently noticeable. Oh, you know what? These aren't even my cams. These are uh, Jackson's cams. So that shows I have those same score marks on my cams. So it's really not an issue. Not an issue. Which cams? are the ones that the lobes are going to be touching. We're gonna do this one and this one. A quarter turns slowly. And you see the cam is lowering itself down into place as it presses the valves open on cylinders two and cylinders four. Of the bolts on and spin them down real quick. All right. We'll torque those once we get the other one in as well. Drop the second cam. As y'all can see, cam turns nice and easy. And since we have it dropped off of TDC, I can spin this all the way around until I get those basically lined up pointing up and at each other. And that's, a, that's pretty close to TDC. And then once we throw the block on here to align that straight and that one crooked, we'll be good. Alien engineering blocks, we have a four degree advance on the intake cam and then this 101 degree uh, non Vanos cam basically oops, stays that way. Top end is officially in time. Now we can bring the bottom end up to TDC as well, and we will hook the cam gear up to the chain so it'll be set in time together, and then we can throw the Vanos 
or the other chain on in the Vanos assembly. All right, let's bring this from 50 degrees out to TDC. Now that we know the cams are all lined up. These are M6 hardware, so that's about 10 Newton meters. You can see here, it's got the same shape and hump. between it so that we never lost this on the gears because if so you're slowly turning one of these to line them back up together you can see while I turn this hole stays clear when getting full rotation out of the cam so you lose it about right there so I was messing around with his Vanos gears and it just wasn't lining up correctly. For reference, every time this was all the way over here, this hole was starting to disappear behind that gear. And we'd bring it all the way. You know, it'd be fine over here, but we were limited on our travel coming back. So after staring at it for a while, I went ahead and marked this gear to the arrow and moved it one chain link left and now we have complete travel, which leads me to believe, because I took this motor apart and I very immediately zip tied that chain together so it was in its correct location, which leads me to believe that this cam setup was always limited on its variable intake cam travel. Uh, not by much, but a, I mean, a noticeable amount. And I bet it was uh, able to be felt in the power band. Next up is spacers and spring. Of course, the thinner one. Spring goes in. You can see the rub marks here. That's right there for the thicker one. Everything is just going to be hand tight for now so that it can turn while we set the banners. Everything stays together. The next thing up is this Torx bolt. This one's actually reverse threaded. And the only reason I know that was because I almost damaged mine the first time I ever rebuilt it. I thought I could just figure it out and then I had to go to YouTube. Here I am now on YouTube. So, Torx mail. Let's go spin it out. So the reason why these little rings end up going bad and start rattling, it actually has nothing to do with this ring itself so much as it does with the bearings and everything inside that ends up squishing down like these, all of these. They end up pressing down just enough that this starts to wiggle. Now all we have to do is take this and sand it down as well. Then it will compress everything again rather than this causing wiggle and play. Because this spacer is keeping this from sucking all the way in. Gloves catching already. Just like that. That's all we're gonna need to do. And after we took it, quick sand, threw it back together, torqued it down, there's no more play. So big thanks to Vlad because I was about to buy a new kit with a new ring and new O-rings and stuff. 
And he said, for now, you're in a rush. Just sand it down. So good to know. In the future, if like we have leaks and stuff like that, we can replace this outer seal here. But otherwise, that's a rebuilt Vanos unit. That took no time at all. If you look down in here, you can see them. They are incredibly hard to find and they stretch really easily. So do not fuck them up. They're like 10 newton meters, I believe. I'll put, I'll put it up on the screen, please. Here we go. So this guy, all the way to the right. You see here, there we go. We're all the way to the right. Put this in and turn this gear until we kind of start to boom, fall into place. There it is. That is a installed Vanos. Hell yeah. Yeah, so. It's done, boys. Jackson got here. I was in a bit of a rush. Uh, so I threw the Vanos back together. We threw it back in and timed it like y'all saw. And uh, the motor's done and in the car. He's missing a couple things that he needs to get, like an intake cam cap. Uh, then he's gonna do his valve cover gasket once he gets that, and then the oil pan gasket. So I just temporarily threw those on, but it's in the car. Toss in the rig, time to go north. Look at that. Good thing's automotive. Hell yeah, brother. Nice and safe, I hope. Uh, shake test is pretty well. <laughs> One tire is good though, look at no that. Give it a shake. No, dude, that shook the whole truck. Not a, chance. Not a chance. Not a chance. And that, my friends, is another completed Good Things motor out the door. I'm real excited for Jackson. That one on like 10 PSI should make 8 PSI, 10 PSI. It should make 400 wheel. At 12 to 14, he should be making 450. That thing's going to make some power. So that's it. Another motor out the door. I really appreciate you guys hanging out for this one. Keep a lookout for that root beer brown E36 with a good things auto banner on it up at Lanier Raceplex. By the time this video comes out, hell, it might be running and up there testing. So I appreciate you guys. Have a really good day. I'll see you for the next one.